I'm Chuck Blahouse with the Hudson Institute. The Congressional Budget Office recently handed some disturbing information to Congressional staff about the Social Security program. It turns out that the Social Security surplus, which was projected recently to be 85 to 90 billion dollars both this year and next, is basically gone. The Congressional Budget Office informed Congressional staff two months ago that the surplus in 2010 would be a thin three billion dollars. Now in a 700 billion dollar program, three billion dollars is basically a rounding error. With the slightest downward nudge to the economy next year, Social Security could face operating deficits as early as 2010. Good. Now what happened to the Social Security surplus? Basically it's a combination of several factors. Some of them are predictable, some less so. The predictable factor is that retirement benefit claims are surging, with the baby boomers entering their retirement years. Less predictable has been the poor performance of our economy. Payroll tax revenues are sagging far behind previous projections. This accounts for about 85 to 90 percent of the disappearance of the surpluses that we expected last year. At the same time, disability benefit claims have risen. In a bad economy, if you are considering whether to file for disability benefits, you're much more likely to do so than if the economy is booming. And finally, we're having record COLA payments, the highest Social Security COLA since 1982. You may remember that last year we had an unexpected increase in fuel prices in the middle of the year, and we also had an increase in food prices that lasted a good portion of the year. Those cost increases are working their way through Social Security benefit payments now. Now, with the disappearance of the Social Security surplus, there's an interesting political side effect as well. There has been a myth arising in recent years on the left end of the American political spectrum. And this myth basically was that we didn't have a Social Security problem at all. Uh, that it was a manufactured problem, a phony problem, uh, exaggerated by conservatives, and based on overly conservative projections of the Social Security trustees. There were basically three claims at the core of this myth. One was that the trustees were using overly conservative economic assumptions going forward. The second claim was that if those overly conservative assumptions were not used, the Social Security shortfall would basically disappear. And the third uh, central element of the myth was that uh, the trustees had a historic track record of being far too conservative in their projections. Well, none of those things are actually true. In fact, all three of them are false. Uh, the trustees historically do not have an overly conservative projection track record. In fact, they've tended to be very, very accurate and uh, generally more optimistic than they should have been. Uh, secondly, it's never been the case that uh, if the economic uh, growth projections were made a little bit more optimistic that the Social Security shortfall would go away. So even before our recent backtracking in Social Security's financial health, this myth never should have gained any traction. The bottom line is that Social Security's shortfalls are now rushing at us much more quickly than previously anticipated. And at the same time that the Social Security surplus is disappearing, so too are a lot of myths about the Social Security system.